بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطهار الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو أن أهل القرى آمنوا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض ولكن كذبوا فأخذناهم بما كانوا يكسبون If the, pe- if the people of the town had, towns had been faithful and pious, we would have opened to them blessings from the heaven and the earth. But they denied. So we seized them because of what they used to earn. Chapter 7, verse 96. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi ajallah ta'ala Faraj sharif with the blessing of another loud salawat. And also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst his companions and his sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. <laughs> Through, throughout the discussion that we, all of us have been blessed to sit between the verses of Quran and the ahadith of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as about the most important topic of our life and to be about the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajlullah Ta'ala Farajul Sharif, we get to the conclusion of the first segment of our lecture. Inshallah, tomorrow night will be one topic. All of the night's topic, it's related to Imam Mahdi Ajlullah Ta'ala Farajul Sharif, but we have segmented by segment. It's been, tonight is the eighth night we are discussing about the importance of ma'rifah, shanakht, knowing the imam of our time. Summarizing it within a couple of minutes, inshallah, and concluding our argument that we brought to the table day before last. That we are in need of knowing the imam of our time. Summarizing our seven nights of lecture. We are in need. It is wajib upon us, men and women, young and old, in every field that we are in, it is wajib, it is mandatory for us to know the Imam of our time. But unfortunately, we see some people out of this area, out of this center, they dedicate their time and knowledge and reading and research about everything except Imam of, about the Imam of our time. It is completely injustice to the Imam of our time. Completely injustice. We cannot say, may Allah curse those people who killed Imam Hussein alayhi salam, who killed Imam Ali alayhi salam, who killed Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Curse them. If I don't get to know the Imam of my time, what is the difference between me and them? The Imam of their time, he was present, but as we said in the previous night, because they didn't know the Imam of their time, not knowing by the name, they knew it's Hussein ibn Ali. In the battle of Ash, in the battle of Karbala, in the day of Ashura, they knew it is Hussein, son of Ali, the grandson of the Prophet. They knew him. And they came and killed him. So knowing, sisters, please pay attention. Knowing by the definition of the names of the imam, their date of birth, their parents, what happened to them, some basic information, that's not what we mean. Inshallah, in the coming nights, we will hopefully can grasp some understanding about the imam of our time within probably 10 nights that we will dedicate to this topic of knowing. These eight nights, we're talking about the importance of knowing, which again and again and again, 90% of the Shia community that they call themselves Shia, which they should call themselves Muhab, 
they don't know the amount of their time. You ask them about business and stock market and cars and everything, they know everything. You ask them about celebrities, they know it. You ask them about every single little materialistic life, they know it. But you ask them, how many years has it been passed since our Imam was born? Nobody knows. How many representatives did Imam have during his minor occultation? Nobody knows. How many hadith has been narrated from the Imam? Nobody knows. Do you know what should we do? What is our responsibility toward the Imam? Nobody knows. Does Imam benefit us in this day and age? Nobody knows. Of course he doesn't benefit us, Sheikh. He is not there. How can he be benefiting us if he is not there? completely wrong answer. So this is what we mean by the definition of knowing the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Farij Sharif. So people won't come later in the day, later in the year, later in the time and say, curse those people in the 21st century. They didn't do anything about the Imam of their time. Importance of knowing the Imam of our time. That is why we have dedicated for the newcomers tonight, we have dedicated 30 nights about knowing the Imam of our time. And it is not enough. And it is not enough. When was the last time you read something about the Imam of your time before Ramadan? I don't know. When was the last time I did dua for the Imam of my time? I don't know. When was the last time I remembered Imam in my Qunud? I don't remember, Sheikh. That is injustice to the Imam of our time. And we are responsible. Let's continue with our discussion. Day before last, we argued, sisters, please pay attention. I don't know how many times I have to say it, but I will keep saying it. Night before last, we argued that the reappearance of the Imam is based on two factors. How many factors? Alhamdulillah, some people are with us. How many factors? Two. Two factors. Number one, when Allah wills. When Allah wants, Imam will reappear. That's the first. Second factor, when we want him to come back. Sheikh, who doesn't want the Imam to come back? You and I, respectfully. And, and everyone who's seeing this video. Until now, there is no want in us for the Imam to come. We might say dua here and there, remember Imam here and there, but truly, genuinely, let me examine my own life. Do I really want him to come back? Or no? Oh Allah, faraj. If he came, good. If he didn't come, okay. We just move on with our life. That's what I see within the community. When we wake up in the morning, what is our first and main concern? It's only our bills, isn't it? It's our, our bills, our store, our market. When we wake up, for some people, what should we eat today? When we wake up, what is the first priority in our mind? Is it Imam Mahdi? For majority of the people, respectfully, it's not. Imam Mahdi doesn't play any role in my day-to-day -day life. I'm so busy with my studying, with my education, with my life, with my husband, with my wife, with my business, without, with, with, with. Imam Mahdi doesn't have any role in it. That's why we say we don't, I, I argue until now, we don't want him. The reason? Because he's not here yet. The verse that we started the program with. If the people of towns had been faithful and pious. Keep this in mind. Yesterday, last night, we brought verses of Quran that if we want to be relieved from all of the distress that we are living in, we have to do something. The verse of Quran. In Allah, la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma Allah will not change the condition of the people unless they themselves change. Do we want change? Of course, Sheikh, we want change. But I, I don't see it in action. I don't see it. I don't see any unity within our communities. There is none. 
I don't see any collaboration between communities, Shia community all around. There is none. So we don't want him to come yet. When he comes, Shaykh, what happens when he comes? Why should we pray for him to reappear? Because we've heard from you, Shaykh, when he comes, he's going to take the sword and he's going to chop a lot of heads. That's the misconception. That shows that we have not learned, we have not read, we have not researched. When Imam comes, who knows how many months the whole battle will last? Anybody? How many months? How many years? Where it, where it will take place? Who knows? Between six to eight months, the war will happen only. Between Hajaz, Iraq, and Medina, and Kufa, and Sham, between this area. Six to eight months maximum. We've heard, Sheikh, when he comes, he will kill so much that the blood will reach the knee. Whose knee? The knee of his horse. Haven't we heard this? Misconceptions. Between parentheses. If we, we want to kill so many, even only in this hall, kill so many that the blood reaches the knee of the horse, how many people we have to kill in this hall only for the blood to reach, to reach the knee of the horse? Where do we get these things? When you and I don't read about Imam Mahdi, the enemy of Imam Mahdi comes and they plant ideas in the mind of the brains. For our kids, Imam Mahdi becomes someone scary. Oh, be careful. When he comes, he's going to chop a lot of heads. Whose fault is it? Sisters, please pay attention. Whose fault is it? As the fault of the parents that they only cared about putting food on the table, clothes on their, on their kids, shoes, the latest shoes, the latest electronic, but they didn't buy a book for their kids to read about the Imam of their time. They didn't bring to the majalis of Ahl al-Bayt for them to get to know about the Imam of their time. When Imam ha comes, what happens? Hadith. Imam has a spokesperson. He goes, Ayyuhannas! Oh people, is there any needy person? Let them come to the treasure of Muslim. Let them get whatever they want. Is there any needy person? One person gets up. He says, I, I need some money. The mom tells him, go to the treasure. He goes. He tells him, hold on to, the, to your clothes. He holds on to his clothes. He, the, the treasure gives him so much that he cannot carry it anymore. Then he's about to leave. He thinks about himself, I don't need this much money. I just need a little bit today. Hadith. Person goes around within the cities. I'm looking for a needy person so I can give them my sadaqah. There is not a, a needy person during the time of the reappearance of the imam. Nobody's in need. There won't be any more blinds. There won't be any more person with disability. There won't be any more distress. There won't be any more bloodshed and chaos. It will become the utopia that we are hoping for, but I don't take any action toward that. When I start reading, when Imam comes, what happens to me? I will be hopeful. I will do something. What can I do to hasten that reappearance? But I don't know it. I don't know it. I don't have time for it, Sheikh. Busy. I don't have time for it. Good luck. Imam is watching. Inshallah, we'll talk one night that Imam is watching every action of ours from verses of Quran. Every action of ours is being seen by the Imam. Every action. We look this way, Imam sees it. Just this way, Imam sees it. We bring the verses of Quran, inshallah. So my argument again is, reappearance of the Imam is based on two factors. Number one, when Allah wills. Number two, when you and I want him to reappear, he will reappear. We brought the verses of Quran last night. Tonight, let's look at some of the history of the lives of the Imam. I really don't want to be harsh. I don't want to be tough. I have a couple of people that I really trust after my lecture. They do criticize my lecture that Sheikh, 
try to be more, a little bit more gentle, try to be a little bit more calm, try to a little bit motivate people. Never mind. Let's look at the life of Ahlul Bayt We start with the life of Amir Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi. At age 40, his mission starts. Prophet is born prophet. His mission starts at age 40. He is born prophet. He is born ma'soom. He is born infallible. He is the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at age 40, Allah tells him, right now your mission starts. Go and start inviting people to me. He starts, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تُفْلِحُوا For you to attain salvation, say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ At age 40, he starts. Did the people accept him as, his, as their leaders? No. He was in Mecca for 13 years. How many years? 13. He was in Mecca for 13 years. He was tortured. He was stoned. His companions were killed. They were tortured. The people of Mecca didn't want Rasulullah. Rasulullah would walk. The people of Mecca, the infidels, the kuffar, will bring their kids, will give them pebbles and stones, go and stone Rasulullah. Rasulullah keeps walking and they start stoning Rasulullah many times. For 13 years, they didn't want him as their leader. They didn't accept him. After 13 years, people of Medina, Aws and Khazraj, they told Rasulullah, come to us. We want you to be our leader. Rasulullah goes to Medina and he establishes his government and he establishes the first masjid, Masjid al Nabi. He, because people accepted him, because people wanted him, his leadership started. The reappearance of the Imam is based on two factors. When Allah wills and when you and I want. Until now, you and I, we haven't got that point that we want him to come. Rasulullah, when people wanted him, he became the leader. You don't want me? I'm not going to be the leader. Next, Ma'soom. Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam right away after Rasulullah is Khalifatullah. People accept him or don't accept him is Khalifatullah. He is Allah's representative on earth. They like it or they don't like it. He's Rasulullah's Khalifa. He's the Imam. He's the leader. But he will not impose his leadership on people. He's the leader. Khalifatullah. He is. But he will not say, okay, people, you must obey me. He won't. People, you want me? I will lead you. You don't want me? I will not impose myself upon you. This is called democracy. This is called people's way. This is called Allah appoint him. But people, and instead of going and applying and taking the leadership of the school of Thaqid, Saqif, Ghadir, which is resembled in Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, they go and follow the school of Saqif. Two different schools. A school of Ghadir, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. School of Saqif, you name it. People didn't want Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. They didn't want him. We don't want you as a leader. Parentheses. Sheikh, Imam, when they took the Khilafah and the leadership from him, he didn't do anything. He didn't say anything. He just left it. False. False. Chat, the sec third sermon was in Nahj al Balagha. Khutbah al Shaykh Go read it. Read Khutbah al Shaykh Shaqiyya in Nahj al Balagha. Shaykh, what is Nahj al Balagha? Nahj al is something that they're cooking tonight, inshallah. We will all be served by Nahj al -Balagh. It's a book, compilation of the words of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The third sermon, Khutbah to Shaykh Shaqiyya. Imam says, Ibn Abi Quhafa, Abu Bak wore the Khilafa that was fitted for me, but he took it and he wore it, and I left it. But how the condition he left it, I let you go and, and read it. 
people of Saqifa, people say, Amir al muminin we don't want you. Amir al muminin said, okay, I'm going to lecture. I'm going to say it. I will do my best to get it back after a couple of tries. 40 days according to some narrations, he went to the household of Muhajirin and Ansar. I'm here, Did you, don't you remember Khadir? Yes, I we remembered. What happened? Oh, sorry, something happened. Okay, do you want to aid me? Yes, tomorrow come. Shave your head with your sword. We can take the Khilafah back because I want Allah's, Allah's order to be applied to the people. Nobody was there for him. The only people that Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam said, the hadith said, People after Rasulullah, they deviated from the path of Rasulullah except for Salman, Abadar, Miqdad, that's it. And Ammar, that's it. People didn't want him. Amir al muminin sisters, please pay attention. Amir al muminin and instead of leading people to heaven, guide them, he had to go far. First Khalifa killed him. Did, they, they learn, did the people learn their lesson? No. Second Khalifa came. For 25 years, the master, the commander of the faithful Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib didn't have the leadership in his hand. How many years? 25 years people did not want Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib, the one that has been divinely appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People didn't want him. He stayed home. After 25 years, after the third Khalifa Uthman was killed, they rushed toward his house. Oh, Amir al muminin do something for us. Please help us, rescue us. Imam says in Khutbah Shaykh Shaqiyya, لَوْلَا حُضُورُ الْحَاضِرِ وَقِيَامُ الْحُجَّةِ بِوُجُودِ النَّاصِرِ If it wasn't because of the people came to me and wanted me to lead them, I would have left it. Why should I come? These people that they don't want me, why should I go and lead them? I cannot impose myself on them. But Imam says, because they came to me and they wanted me and they asked me to become their leader, I came and I led them. The reappearance of the Imam is based on two factors. When Allah wills, and when you and I want Imam to lead us, until today, we don't want the Imam as our leader. Next Imam. Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. After the commander of the faithful Amir al-Mu'mineen is martyred, Imam Hassan alayhi salam takes the Khilafah, takes the leadership of the community between five to six months. Muawiyah does what he does. And Imam prepares two to three army. Muawiyah buys them with money. Imam says, okay, I'm gonna hand it to Muawiyah. If I don't have anybody to aid me, if I don't have people used to come to Imam Hassan, may Allah curse them. They used to come to Imam Hassan alayhi salam said, you who me humiliated us mu'mineen. Telling Imam Hassan al mushtaba Imam said, if I had people, the amount of my fingers, I would have gone fight against Muawiyah. This much people I didn't have. Ten. He left it to Muawiyah. You don't people, you don't want me as a divine appointed to be leading you? I'm gonna let you go. But if you remember, we talked about Shahada Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha. What happened to Muslims? Thousands and thousands they were killed and chopped their head left and right and left and right and left and right. Good for them. They deserve. And we deserve what we are going through today also. Every problem that we have within our life, Allah says, If the people of the towns believed, Amanu, Amanu to what? Amanu to Ahl al-Bayt alayhum salam and they were pious, we would have op opened the door, opened to them the blessings from the heaven and the earth. Enjoy it! You're a believer. But I haven't been a believer yet. I'm not pious yet. Because, Shaykh, I have 
bills to pay. Sheikh, because my wife's expectation is so high, she and I, we work double shift, we cannot still afford. Habibi, lower the expectation, you can survive. Lower expectation. Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussein, people wanted him. They wrote him, okay, enough is enough. We see Yazid, we want you. When Imam comes, People, Imam said, okay, you want me? I'll send you Muslim Ibn Aqeel. How many people pledge allegiance with Muslim? 18,000 people pledge allegiance with Muslim Ibn Aqeel. At the time of Aisha prayer, how many he had behind him? Zero. No one. Allah tells you and I, well, I see what you guys did to other Imams. Rasulullah, you didn't want it for the first 13 years. Amir al in 25 years, you said, no, I don't know. We want the school of Saqifa. Go. After Imam Hassan Mushtaba, only six months, you couldn't tolerate. You couldn't take it. You were not brave enough. You were bought with a couple of dirhams and dinars. Imam Hussein, 18,000 people pledge allegiance with him. Only 1,500 come to Karbala. And on the day of Ashura, 72 to 84 people left. Sisters, please pay attention. After Imam Hassan al Mushtaba, Imam Zayn Abidin under surveillance, tight surveillance, people cannot visit him. Imam al Baqir, the same thing. Imam al Sadiq had a little bit more freedom. A person said, I came to Imam al Sadiq by the name of Sudayr. Tells Imam, Imam, let's rise. Because there was a fight between Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas. Bani Umayyah completely losing the battle, losing the Khilafah, and Bani Abbas coming, taking the power. So they came to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Oh Imam, rise! You have a lot of Shia that will support you. Imam said, how many? He said, mi'at alf, 100,000. Imam said, mi'at alf? He said, no, mi'atain, 200,000, 300,000. The whole Muslim community is behind you. Imam said, so there, let's get on a ride. Let's go. They came out of Medina. They arrived within the middle of the desert. They saw a shepherd, had a folk, group of animals, goats and sheep. Imam said, let's pray. They prayed. After the prayer, Imam says, Ya Sudair, if I had this many companions, I would have started. This many. Imam got to the right, he left. So there said, I went, I counted the animals, the sheep and the goats. I found them to be 17. Oh, Imam, come. We will be there for you. How, how I prove myself to the Imam of my time? Do I know the Imam? Forget about the battle. Forget about the sword and the shield. Do I know the Imam of my time? One story. There was a Marja Taqlid. He was single. Not Marja Taqlid, a knowledgeable person. He kept saying, Imam, come. We are ready. How many of us we say that? If we do say that. Again, I'm not talking about this people. I'm talking, they have found a new planet. There are people in the new planet and they're seeing this in another new planet. Some people even don't remember Imam Mahdi in the other planets. Forget about saying Imam, come. This person kept saying, Imam, 313, we are there for you, Imam. We're definitely there for you. We are there. Is it possible? We don't have amongst millions of people, we don't have 313. One night, he dreamed. They told him, let's go. Imam reappeared. Let's go. He said, really? Imam reappeared, let's go. They came, they traveled, traveled in his dream. Traveled, traveled, traveled. They got to the point, he, they said, the Imam is there and he's ready for you, but you are single. How about you get married? And then because when you're married, you get more thawab. Two rak'ah, salah of the person who's married is better than 70 rak'ah of the person who's not married. He said, sure, but there is no groom, there is no bride. They said, it's okay, don't worry about it. We find you here and there. Here's your bride. Get married. Okay.
Okay, get married. Get with your bride into the room. We get, get to the bride in the room. As soon as he gets to the bride with the, with the bride in the room, yes, what happened? Imam said, let's go. Seriously? Tell Imam half an hour. They go and come back. Half an hour. Let's go. Imam is waiting. Tell Imam, as soon as he gets on his horse, I'll be there. Let's go. Imam got on his horse. He's about to leave. Come on. It's only he had to reappear tonight. Imam leaves and this person wakes up finding out he's not from the 313. How many of us are? How many of us we are on the path of becoming one of the 313? Because Imam al-Jawad said, and I'm going to conclude with this hadith. Imam al-Jawad we discussed about this in a previous, as a good reminder. Imam al-Jawad says, if Imam Mahdi has 313 companion, he will reappear. And then he gets 10,000 soldiers, he starts the leadership of the world. Sheikh, he doesn't have 313. That's the hadith of Imam al-Jawad source, Kitab, Shaykh al-Saduq. Go read it. Four books we are introducing every night for those who are joining us tonight, and I'm not sure if we're going to see them anymore. Four books. Number one, Makyar al makar Number two, Kamal al-Din wa Tamam al Na'ma. Number three, Al-Ghayba lil numani Fourth, Muntakhab al Athar. We are responsible. We must. Don't give me an excuse, I don't have time. All of us, we have time. Half an hour a day. All of us. Hour a day. No matter how busy we are, we still have time. It is wajib. I'll repeat my statement from the beginning of the lecture. It is wajib upon us to go and get to know the Imam of our time. People, it is wajib for us to go and get to know the Imam of our time. We introduce four books. If you don't have access to them, please text me, WhatsApp me, message me. Alhamdulillah, we're getting good numbers messaging me every day. Three, four people. The books are going out. The PDF available on phone. Easy. No excuse. It is wajib from us to know the Imam of our time. Action plan. Let's dedicate a time starting this month of Ramadan and during the nights of Qadr Asking Allah, O oh Allah, increase our ma'rafah and knowledge to the Imam of our time. This should be our number one wish. Our number, our number one of our du'as. O oh Allah, increase the ma'rafah of the Imam to us. Let us raise our, raise our hand and read du'a al-gharih. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم together اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طواب وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين صلوات